Hey, what is up, everybody? So, we are getting back into Fantasy Fridays. I know it is only in July, but hey, why not? You know what? It's never too early to start fantasy football, right? So, a lot of you may have looked at my other videos and go, why the hell is he doing fantasy football? Well, it's a passion of mine. It's a hobby of mine. I love doing it. We all need escapism. So, anyways, uh, be on the lookout for that video in the other section. But today, we are going to be getting into QBs. And why is that? Well, QBs are the, the heart of the team, right? They're the ones that help drive the offense down. Well, we're going to get into where and when you should draft what QBs. So, Per our friends at Fantasy Pros, that they are not sponsoring the video, I'm just saying this is where I look up a lot of information, along with ESPN and other places that provide data with ADPs and other things. Let's get into it. Number one, Patty Mahomes. Obviously, <laughs> he's a good choice, right? Well, I'm going to have to disagree with you guys. I am not going to draft any of these first five quarterbacks that I'm about to go over because... According to everyone, you know, he's the number one quarterback you should select, right? A lot of people are going to select him in the first round. I don't think so. New contract of 10 years? Have you looked at all the people who got 10-year contracts? Michael Vick, Dante Culpepper. The list is, you know, a couple more. I'm not going to get into it. A lot of them were busts after the 10 years. Now, who's to say Pat Mahomes won't be different? He is different. In my opinion, he is a better Aaron Rodgers. Now, yes, he did win the MVP. His price tag is too high. His ADP is too high. I'm sorry. I'm not going to spend a first-round pick for him. I'm just not. The, the way I will put a pick in for him in maybe the second round is if I'm in a double quarterback league, bonus point league, or 12-man league. So when we're talking about this, obviously we're going to go off PPR. PPR is the basically the standard now. Uh, NFL has already – their fantasy is – Pretty much all PPR. So not even going to talk about standard points. We're going to talk about PPR placement on these guys. So if I'm in a double quarterback, bonus points, 12-man or higher league, I might take him in the first round if I'm on the back half of the draft. If I'm in position, you know, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, you know, anywhere in there, I might take him or I might take him in the second round on the wraparound because majority of people are in snake. Now in bid formats where you have to bid for the players, I wouldn't bid for him because he's going to go for too high. He's going to go in the 50s. You know, he's going to go way up there. Anyways, moving on to number two, Lamar Jackson. Now, Lamar Jackson's a mobile quarterback. He was great with stats last year. I think he's going to be figured out a lot like how Colin Kaepernick was. There's going to be that one defender that kind of shadows him. Now, mind you, he's much faster, much more talented, much better at football than Colin Kaepernick. So I don't think it's going to be as big of a problem for him. But, you know, he, his okay, he has an okay arm. It's developed a little bit. But his ADP is still too high. Same thing with Patrick Mahomes. I'm going to have to be in the back half of the draft. I'm going to have to be in a double quarterback. You know, all these stipulations are going to have to happen for me to take him. In standard PPR, not going to touch him. Dak Prescott, number three. What the are you kidding me? You ranked Dak Prescott as number three? Are you smoking crack? I I'm sorry. If the Dallas Cowboys can't even commit to him, why are you committing to him as early as possible? I don't get this. Now, don't get me wrong. He's got weapons. He's got Zeke. He's got, you know, a little bit of a defense. Like, Dallas Cowboys as a whole is a good team. Not going to lie. As much as I despise Dallas Cowboys, their team is decent. Am I going to take Dak Prescott after Lamar Jackson and Patrick Mahomes? Hell no. I'm not going to touch him unless he's there in the 10th round. It doesn't matter what league I'm in. I'm not taking him. No. Pass. Cowboys passed on him. They franchise tagged him. I'm passing on him. Number four, Russell Wilson. He deserves to be a number three. Russell Wilson is consistent. He's a good ADP. Solid QB. But then again... In any, any of the leagues, I wouldn't take him till third round. It doesn't matter what league I'm in. Third round is a solid choice for, for uh, Russell Wilson. Patrick Mahomes, Lamar Jackson, solid case for first or second round if the league is in those stipulations like I, I said. Double QB, 12 man and up, yada, yada, yada. Another what the are you smoking? Kyler Murray in number five. Look, I get that they got DeAndre Hopkins. I get that they have Kenyon Drake. I get that they have the ageless wonder of Larry Fitzgerald. 
But please, the guy's only played in the year for in the league for a year. Now, does he have potential? He does. But I'm not taking him in the top five of the quarterbacks. Hell no. If anything, Drew Brees and Rodgers should be here. It should be Mahomes, Jackson, Wilson, Brees, Rodgers. That's how it should be. But anyways, obviously I'm not a fantasy expert. You know, whatever. That's my take on it. I'm passing on him. The only way I'm taking him is in the 10th round if he's there. That's the only time I'll ever touch him. Deshaun Watson definitely should be ranked higher than Kyler Murray. He's number six. Solid QB. They've had a few acquisitions. You know, they've gotten a few different pieces. Yes, they did lose DeAndre Hopkins. But Deshaun Watson, he's just a great guy. Great QB all overall. I'm not taking him any earlier than the fifth round if i'm you know if i'm in a double qb stipulation standard ppr no no extra fluff i won't take until the eighth round josh allen pass moving on (laughs) same with matt ryan pass moving on i mean don't get me wrong i'm not on the josh josh allen hype train nope not at all matt ryan i'm sorry dude you blew a 28-3 lead to uh you know new england patriots you will forever be in my book a qb i will pass on now will i take you in dfs depends on your matchup (laughs) number nine carson wentz now i like carson wentz i think he's got a lot of talent i think he's got a lot of potential but the dude doesn't stop getting hurt like come on dude like somebody looks at you when they want to tackle you and you break your arm or something obviously i'm being sarcastic but the point is is if he can stay healthy He's got okay weapons. The guy's got a good arm. He needs to develop his vision a little bit better, um, and his receivers need to stop dropping the ball. Besides that, I like him. I think he's, and a lot of you uh, NFC, I think it's NFC uh, East people are going to be mad at me, but I think he's the best quarterback in the NFC East. I mean, look who they have. They have Daniel Jones, Dak Prescott, and crap, I forget who Washington Redskins, well, sorry, I don't want to say Redskins. Um, the Washington team in the NFC East, I don't remember who their quarterback is because I didn't even put him on here. That's how irrelevant he is to me. (laughs) Anyways, not trying to sound elitist. Just I'm going with the facts here. Number 10, Drew Brees. Now, I don't know why he got put into number 10, but he's there. But he's a solid choice. Great weapons. He's got Michael Thomas, Jared Cook, Alvin Kamara. Come on. Like, the guy's got stuff. And they've got Latavius Murray as backup. They've got Teddy Bridgewater as the backup QB. Look at what they did last year when Breeze hurt his thumb. They didn't even they, they didn't even sweat. Like, come on. In, in a standard PPR league, I would I would jump up in sixth round and take him. Um, in the other ones, double QB stuff like that, fifth or sixth round for me there. Tom Brady, same thing. Dude's got loads of weapons. Cameron Bray, OJ Howard, Mike Evans, Chris Godwin. I mean. Rob Rob Gronkowski's back. Like what? It's insane. It's it's like the Patriots of old, but on a different team now. Um, now I know Godwin and Evans weren't on there, but you know, who's to say Godwin is his new Edelman? You know. I, anyways, he stacked. Great option in the fifth or sixth round. I mean, yes, he is 42, 43 years old. But, you know, I'd still take a chance on him. If if he's one of the QBs there, I'll take him. Moving on. So that was like we're going to move on to like Tier 3 guys now because that was Tier 1 and 2. Tier 3 now, Matt Stafford. I feel bad for you Lions fans out there because Matt Stafford is a great guy, great overall quarterback. I think he's been heavily underutilized as far as – getting him the appropriate weapons yes he has kenny galladay they trade away golden tate which was an amazing receiver for you guys they haven't gotten you a good running back in years i mean the guy was just going to waste his career away there it sucks but you know what if he's there he's got decent weapons i would take him in the seventh or eighth round in a standard league so moving on i don't get this 13th aaron Rodgers. now look I get he had a decent year last year, but it's Aaron freaking Rodgers. Yes, I'm a Green Bay fan, and I'm a little bit biased, but come on. The dude is ridiculously good at freaking Hail Marys. Like, anyways, yeah, you could say he got lucky, and I know a lot of you are going to say he's a prima donna, and he's, you know, all those other things, but when you break it down to stats, if you look at 
what he does. Last year, 20 yards plus on, on his throws, 1,200 yards, 22, no, 12 touchdowns, two interceptions. The dude's got accuracy. The dude can put it where it needs to be. Yes, they got Devontae Adams. They've got Aaron Jones. They just added De- Devin Funches. Now, I know Funches has been kind of a bust, but look where he was. He was in Carolina for a while. And anyways, he moved. So with Aaron Rodgers thrown to him, I don't see why Devin Funches doesn't become a solid number two receiver besides behind Devontae. And then you throw in Alan Lazard or you know anybody else in number three. It's somewhat decent now. Yes, we did lose Jimmy Graham, but you know that's beside the point. So moving on to number 14, Daniel Jones, pass, sorry. You ain't got no weapons, bro. Like you got, I, I, you got Sterling Shepard, and you've got um, Darius Slayton. Okay, that's great, but I, I'm just not sold on the Giants yet. Let's see how they do this year. Let's see how Daniel Jones works. Do I think he has potential? Yes. Do I think he it will be a better Eli Manning? Yes. But it's still a little early to commit to him 100. percent Now, I will say if he's there in the 11th round on a new quarterback and he is the best shiny turd available, I will take him. But I, I'm not, not targeting him. Number 15, Big Ben. Big Ben's always been a solid choice. Good options in the seventh round if he's there. He's got Juju. He's got now they have Eric Ebron at tight end, which is a really good option for you guys. I mean, he, he, Big Ben's been solid. Now, can he stay healthy? That's that's the problem here. As some of these veteran quarterbacks get up there in age, injury prone is a lot higher. And Big Ben, you know, Drew Brees, you know, a lot of these guys, they've been going through some injuries. As long as they can stay healthy, we'll be okay. So Big Ben, definitely a good option in the seventh round. I wouldn't go any higher with him because um, he still has a little bit to prove. Now, This is the last one we're going to talk about today because I think this right here is a sleeper, okay? Cam Newton, 16th overall. You know, depending on the league you're in, if you're in a standard PPR league and you've got 10 people, more than likely Cam Newton should be there in the 10th round, maybe the 9th, maybe the 11th. And at that point, if everyone else has a quarterback and you don't have one yet, and Cam Newton is there, but like Big Ben and a couple other ones aren't, I would take Cam Newton, and here's why. He went to New England. New England said, we'll give you a shot, okay? Cam Newton had a whole year off because of, um, God, what's his name? I forget his name in Carolina. Played the whole year. I don't know why I can't think of his name because I had him on my roster last year. But anyways, the point is, is he came in. He took the show for a little bit. Something Allen right because there was josh allen there was another yeah anyways his last name's allen i can't remember point is cam newton is going to be a sleeper this year a lot of people are going to sleep on him a lot of people are going to let him drop and he's going to come back with a vengeance because of what carolina did to him he also had the whole year off and got healthy now i know he dresses funny i know that's his own style that's his own you know way of being totally fine cool man as long as you can ball I'm okay with it. And you know what? I would even be willing to jump up to the sixth or seventh round to take him if he's still there. And other people have already snatched up quarterbacks because they went wild frenzy because somebody started taking one in the second round. Point is, if you already have a quarterback too in the later rounds and you're in the 10th round, I would take Cam Newton as a bench spot. Normally, I don't take a second quarterback. I wait and I kind of wait for my quarterback to go on by, drop a crappy receiver or running back that I have, play that guy for the week, and then move on. But if I'm in a position where I picked up maybe Drew Brees, Carson Wentz, Deshaun Watson, and I'm sitting there in the 10th round and, and Cam Newton's there, I'm taking him. I'm, I'm letting him ride the bench. I'm, I'm using him for bye week, and if he's popping off like a champ, he may start for me and I trade away the other guy or vice versa. But the point is, he's my sleeper pick of the quarterback position this year. And, and you know what? I could be wrong, but I think I'm right. <laughs> and that's why I say it. So that's what we got today for QBs. Um, this is the first in a 
multitude of videos that are coming out before fantasy starts. Next week, we're going to be getting into running backs. Then we're getting into receivers. Then we're going to get into tight ends. And then the video after that will be a compass of everyone, everything going through if I was in first position, if I was in the middle, and if I was in the end, what I would draft considering what may be available in those positions. So with that, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you guys are ready for fantasy season because I am God, the world needs something fun to do. And, uh, you know, this this pandemic is really messing with a lot of things. And just looking at fantasy stuff makes me excited, gives me hope. And I know a lot of you out there with the whole political issues with the NFL, I'm not going to get into it. But the point is, is I don't give a crap about that right now. I give a crap about people going out and throwing the football and having fun. That's what I'm watching for. That's what I'm waiting for. And I'm ready. Are you Hope to see you guys in the next video, and I hope you guys enjoy this. Take care.